building fund, which is not bad. It's down to 40-some thousand. That will be good. Yeah? So whatever goes in there goes right to the mortgage account. It doesn't get mixed in the general. What we'd like to do is have enough come in here so none of the mortgage has to come out of the general account. That's how the theory of this. And you've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. The less I talk about the box, the less comes in the box. The more I talk about the box, the more comes in the box. But I don't want to talk about a box all the time. Okay? I want to talk about the Word of God. Hallelujah. All right, are you ready? Stand to your feet. It's going to be a great week, Ellen. It's going to be off the charts. You ready for it, Rhonda? It's going to be one after another. Good things, wonderful things. Some are surprises, some are things you sowed for. But it's like the cork's going to come off end of February. Yeah? You in on that, Evan, or are you too young? You're in on it? All right, because you are. You're, you're positioned for a tremendous blessing and promotion. Okay, so be in the right spot. All right, Father, we worship you and confess that the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want or lack any single good thing. We worship you with this offering today, Father, and we thank you that this building and every other thing we'll need will be taken care of according to your riches and glory, and I bless your people. May their cupboards be full, their bodies be healthy, their homes blessed with peace and love and joy. In the name of Jesus, amen? Amen. 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 Fill the box online. Do you give online, or do you just still write your checks and... Don't round them up. Or is this too personal? The, uh, yeah, yep, that's the... You did. You use bill pay? <laughs> okay, the word for you is round up. And we're not talking the pesticides either. Do you believe in rounding up? I round up. It's because it's easier. <laughs> Except for when I weigh myself, I don't want, I don't, <laughs> I don't round up. I keep it low. Round down. Hallelujah. Well, we got a bunch of our people in Muskegon at a soul winning class. So uh, that's a good reason not to be in the house and They've got to reach their generation, so I gave them, go ahead and do it. I thought you'd be there. Nah? And plus, you've got to stop and eat. Right? Tell you, you've got to stop and eat. And they got stuff up there in Muskegon. Yeah? Men's conference is coming up. We should all go up there. Okay? I mean, all this guy should go up there. You guys don't want to be anywhere near up there. Hear 400 men singing. Whoa! He's, something's in the mail. I think it's the end of April. I think. Anybody know for sure? Sounds about right? Uh-oh, here go the Google masters. Tay's got it. No, I think April will get it quicker than you. If it's on the calendar, you're a calendar person. If it's on the calendar, it's as good as done. April 19th? It would be a Friday and Saturday? What's your say, Tay? You're getting there. Well, we'll see. You guys will just have to get off work. Come on. I'm ready to preach here. I'm ready to. Um, yeah, AJ, what's. Okay, so it's not like next weekend. So we'll have time to collect our money and, and do all of that. All right, let's pray. Let's get in the word. Father, we're so grateful for everything you've given us and done for us. 
And, and Lord, we, we boldly thank you for more that's coming into our life through your province and through your hand and provision. I decree your blessing over this house and this people that they would be blessed beyond measure. And our crew that is up in Muskegon, may their spirits be open. May the measure of faith come into their heart to win souls and be bold in the earth all the days of their life. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them as they travel. No mischief in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for confirming your word with miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. All right, give somebody a high five. April 19 and 20. Okay. Now, this is Gabe, right? This is Gabe? I've met Gabe before. We're old buddies now. We're three, four months probably, right? <laughs> another Gabe. We can take another Gabe. Another Gabe back there? Really? That's cool. All right, you can be seated. Okay, open up to Proverbs again. I'm not going to teach about anxiety. I got a little bit nervous about that. So, Where's Trevor? Okay, I didn't get anxious about it. I still haven't formulated my whole message yet. I just keep picking at corners. So. Glory. Okay, if you're taking notes. This, this is my title tonight. It's not going to be the deepest of sermons, but it'll save your bacon. Write down, opening doors. Opening doors. Right? You had to do that to come into this sanctuary. Okay? And where you are in your life today, happy, sad, or in between, good or bad, it's solely based on the decisions you've made this far. Now, we live in the victim society, so you don't have to take responsibility for why you're broke, but you spent the money. Okay? Got it? It's your fault because my wife's mad at me. No, whose fault did it if I tick Kevy up? Really? Let's agree that never happens. 18 years, never good, pretty good. Uh, okay, I've ticked her off before, but not on purpose, okay? Not on purpose. That's, that's malice. That's mean-spirited, but sometimes, I'll give you a, a relations lesson. Men think different than women. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, and so you have to learn how to work together. You hearing me, AJ, when you find Miss Wonderful? What you laugh at, she's not going to laugh at. And then when you get really serious, you'll change your whole, whole wardrobe. That's when I know they've crossed the line, man. They're going all the way. True or not? You didn't change his? He likes his, right? And his is cool? Okay. Because oh, women as intelligent as they are, This is going to come out right, okay? Just, it's, I think even the Holy Ghost is saying, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. <laughs> okay, a, a, a possible flaw a woman could have in pursuing a man. That come out smooth? Did I sound professional? Is some women think they can actually change a man. And you can influence and steer a little bit, but what's in his heart is going to be there. And so you can wink and kiss and all that stuff, but if he's mean, he's still going to be mean. Well, I appreciate y'all coming to church tonight. All, all the single guys. Okay, women, help me out. Is that not a flaw women have that, oh, I know he's... And then you get married and you say, How, when, when did he get a hair lip? You know, the cleft lip. I've gone too far now. Huh? 
you know, all of a sudden after you make the commitment and you're married, you look at him and think, when did that happen? When did he start talking so rough? He always has. All right, here's another clue. Ready? I should have told you guys this before you got hooked up. But, but it's working out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a young lady and you want to know how this young man will treat you, watch and observe how he treats his mother, sister, and women in his world. Is it too late? <laughs> you are red in the face, April. You, thanks for telling you now. Is that it? Or does he not, is he not nice to you? Does he say, yo, woman. <laughs> I need to know what this is before I can preach, man. I just won't be able to focus with this. You could ask Rusty what happened to us. <laughs> Today, where is she? back there having hands laid on her for healing or something? You rough her up? You, were you nice to your sister this afternoon? <laughs> well, Jesus and I are going to continue to chip away at this guy. Until it gets all better. Maybe a stick of dynamite every now and then. Right? Did you watch the way Andrew treated his mother when you were dating? Did he ever tell her, shut up? <sighs> no? No. You've been on a roll. I like funny. Can, I'm not included in this story, am I? You're not coming here, buddy. <laughs> Shelly, you fit right in, girl. You're just, <laughs> you're going to make it in here. Did you call 911? Well, you're kind of correct on that. Uh, and then you text Tay, you text Taylor and say, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Really? I'll buy that picture from you. I'll buy you that picture and we'll put it on our web page. <laughs> or we'll have it blown up and put it out in the foyer. No? And you... I don't know. Tim, that's pretty wild church stuff, isn't it? Push mama down the stairs. Which he would never do. Why would a mother play along with that? Oh, sure, I'll pose on the stairs. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's got to be a first, man. <laughs> All right, what did I tell you to write down? Relationship stuff or women can change men or no, they can't. Hear that, Tay? Women can't change men. Lord, no, you can't change a woman. I suggest not even thinking about it. Because women can read minds sometimes. And they don't forget. All you can do is smile, huh, Rhonda? <laughs> oh, 
All right, what did you write down? And the, and the, the emphasis behind that is who are you inviting in? Or what are you inviting in? With every open door, every closed door. Okay? Remember, we're here because of the decisions we've made. Sometimes we've made bad decisions. Right? What do you do after that? Don't make that same decision. Try to get as much information as you can, factual information about that. On, uh, out on the table out there is that little uh, 21 things to help with anxiety that uh, I, everybody should have, whether you do one of them or just have a kind of an understanding. But one of them is be factual, get facts. Don't go, don't go by half of what somebody said and then go ponder and meditate on it. Get the facts. You know, like I one time golfed with a guy, and once about the fourth hole they ask what you do for a living. And I say, I'm a preacher, I pastor a church. And then he got real weird and said, you guys just want money. And I said, have I asked for money? I'm not, I don't need your money. I've been doing this. At that time, it was 20-some years. I said, it's amazing we've made it 20-some years without a penny from you. So I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm just saying our God takes care of us. And then he said, my brother goes to this big church. And so the, it used to be the Baptist Church in Richland. It's a great something now. And he says, he's always inviting me. He's always dogging me. He's always, and he said, and that church is rich. And I said, let me begin by saying that church is not rich. <laughs> if they have 1,200 or 1,500 congregants, their budget is like 10 times more than ours. And everything has a zero or an extra zero on it. So I, they, they might collect more money, but they spend more money, more people, more money. And so I had to say factually, no, they're not all rich. Go in there and ask them for a million dollars. They'll laugh. Now, you go in there and give them a million dollars, the preacher will kiss you. <laughs> Baptist or not. <laughs> now, I did not just put out into the universe, I'll kiss you. It all, that's all. <laughs> Proverbs 17. I'm going to move quick through this, okay? This first is a couple negative ones. 17 and verse 14 says, The beginning of strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop contention before a quarrel starts. How does, what's the beginning of strife like? Like turning a faucet on? Right? Turn it on a little and then more and more and more. Therefore, stop contention. What does contention mean? It means The word means to contend or it means to strive or stride against, to compete with. Okay, so my Bible tells me I better stop contention before something happens. Does everybody know the Hebrew word for quarrel? It means to argue. <laughs> it means to release your opinion, right or wrong. Um, I know we're all born again, spirit-filled, blood-washed, and all of that good Bible stuff in here, but I, I know some Christians like to argue. And it's a thing I try to avoid very strongly on purpose. If I can stop it when it's small, it doesn't go into a big blowout. So next time you got to be right, think about it. Okay? I mean, there is stuff that you will draw a line and say, I'm not backing down from this. But you know how many people want to argue doctrine with me? And I, and I just I give them a Kenneth Hagin quote. I say, I'm not called to debate the gospel. I'm called to preach the gospel. And I'm not going to waste an hour with you and never, never convince you. May you find what you're looking for. Right? Right? And so there are some people, I, I they're in the category, I call them pickers. Not nose pickers. But I call them pickers. Because they'll keep poking at you until they find something that you're defensive about. Whether it's your church, your God, your kids. And they're trying to see if they can get you off your game. So, if I open that door, what comes in? A quarrel and strife. All right, go to the 16th chapter. Just back up one chapter. And go to verse 18. Pride goes before the championship. Before what? Who's, whose Bible says a fall? Is that the King James or NIV? It's the English Bible. Pride goes before destruction. 
and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now, with pride, you start experiencing success in your life, and, and you can get a little bit puffed up. It's, it's good to stay very humble, even with success. Recognize it, build on it. Um, I, ta- I have a lesson I teach of uh, two ways to be stopped. The, the first thing is fear. The devil will just paralyze you with fear so you never move. Okay, that's kind of where this anxiety and depression and stuff that we're talking about is coming from. I've seen a lot of people have the ability to do things for God and in life, but because of fear, they don't, they don't venture out. They won't, they won't do that thing. Then there's others that say, I, I'm not afraid of anything, and they bust through fear and start having success. And then once they start having success, that same devil that tried to stop them and tell them they're no good said, you're awesome. You're the next Michael Jordan. You're the next Derek Jeter. Those are athletes, right? You guys know that? Your pastor's holding you back. You need something more. And so pride, and he'll push you past your calling. I've, I've met a lot of hot shot Christians. And, and after a year or so, they're gone. They're faded out. They're not. And then if you have pride, you have a hard time repenting. It is. Anybody in here ever actually repented? Where you said, I... I take full responsibility for that. I will, I will pay for whatever needs fixed, and I will never do that again, right? It's, pre- it's pretty good. It, it keeps you out of that condemnation. Okay, what else do I want to show you here? Proverbs 11 and 24. I read that verse to you this morning. One who scatters yet increases more. There's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. So at the moment, you might think holding on to what you have that belongs to God is a great idea. But what's the result? What if Evan said to me, I'm not going to tithe or give another nickel to this church because I'm, I'm a college student, I'm working my way, I got to get out of my mama's house, I need money. You don't need to get out of your mama's house, do you? I mean, you got to cook. You cook your own food? Really? In in the air fryer. You're not going to starve then, are you? And and you're not going to marry the wrong woman because you're hungry. And you don't know how to cook. Good job, Mom. And you won't spend thousands of dollars on fast food because you can go home and whip something up. Man, I'm preaching good tonight. Ha! <laughs> we are all over the place tonight, kid. We're pew, 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 pew. I hope, I don't know, if somebody catches live stream, they're going to wonder what's going on. So if, if Evan comes to me and says, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to tell him, you're opening a door that you don't know what's on the other side. And you think you're lacking now. Get wrong with God, and and things will never work. But Evan's not going to do that because he's been taught the Bible since he was a pee wee. Right? He was he broke his teeth in here, or teeth or whatever. Cut my teeth. That's the term. And here he is. Praise the Lord. Okay, so get get the f- emphasis of what I'm saying here is I can make a decision. I can decide to quarrel with somebody, and it could open up a whole competition of that. Go to 2 Corinthians. Can you take another one? Now, this is interesting. 2 Corinthians, second chapter. Now, this is a very familiar subject. Paul says, Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything... I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. How would he take advantage of you? How would a demon spirit take advantage of you from these two verses? All right, if I carry that poison of unforgiveness in my life, I now open a door where I like to hear bad things, where I like to hear bad news. 
See, love doesn't rejoice at unrighteousness. It rejoices in the truth. And unforgiveness is a terrible thing. I think people live with it and don't even know they have it. And then they wonder why all this other stuff's going on. So if you're cool with somebody, I'm cool with somebody. Uh, unforgiveness, uh, this is the analogy I was told. It's like, uh, let's say I'm, I'm holding something against Rhonda. Unforgiveness, me holding on to it, it's like me drinking poison and expecting her to fall over. And you want to, you want to know a human side of unforgiveness? You can be mad as can be at somebody, and they could be just happy as, happy as possible, and, and that ticks me off even more. Now I'm mad because they're happy. They hurt me, and they're happy. Sometimes people don't even know they hurt you. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stickler on this. I choose to forgive. Amen. Forgive means in advance. So I don't wait to see the depth of the cut or the insult. I, I've made a decision. I'm not holding that. Right. Not hold, I, don't, I don't want Satan to get an advantage of me. Right. Mm. You got that? Need any more expounding on that? Got it, AJ? Okay. <laughs> All right, go to Romans. I, honestly, I'm going to get to some positive ones. It's just I'm trying to keep you out of trouble. Okay? I don't want you to come to me and say, it's like a demon's running loose in my world. And I'll say, well, have you forgiven everybody? What you holding on to? And, well, can a pastor ask those questions? When, uh, when Nick got in that accident and all of that mess started, there was a saint in, in Battle Creek that I know, an uh, older lady. Her name's Aunt Bun. That's what we called her. Her name's Vernice. But she's a sweet little Pentecostal grandma. And so she kind of made sure I stayed on the straight and narrow the first year or two. And she'd pray for me and show me scriptures and encourage me. and it was, I didn't realize I needed all that help at that time, but she's been an important part of my life, and I don't see her that much. In fact, I didn't even know if she's alive now. She's the type of lady that one night had a couple people over for dinner, and they went to bless the food and ended up having a prayer meeting, and the food got cold. That's why when we pray grace over the meal, we all hold hands so nobody can dip. That's exactly why. Hey, I had three brothers. I can tell you, there's no playing around at the dinner table, right? And that's where you watch and pray, too. You don't close your eyes. All right, can I give you this one? Romans 2, verse 1, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. That's scary right there. Okay, do we judge people? I can judge myself and I can judge the fruit of people. But I can't say, I know what you're thinking. You did that on purpose. I've seen your type. I can't call anybody a heathen unless they, they truly are. Got it? It's easy to do. A lot of church people do it. I choose to stay free from that, let people be who they are. Um, even as long as I've pastored all of you guys, I, I know so very little about you. I mean, I know some stuff about you, but we did it today. I don't even got the little boys' middle names. One's Clifford and one's uh, Oliver Harold. Isn't that cool? You, should, you missed it. Oliver Andrew. Oakland William. Okay, I thought Oakland was Okie Doki. That Doki was the middle name. So whoever is the big judging people, it's usually a, a smoke screen so you don't see their world. Now, can I tell you something funny? I don't know if you'll get all strange about this or not, but uh, you guys all know who former President Trump is, right? And you know he's, all, he's going to court over all this stuff. And... and uh, I was amazed by it, the, the district attorney in, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, that said, I will bring Trump down, and, and did this whole big thing about it, 
Come to find out, she's been having an affair, spending government money and hiding all of this, and she's more guilty than Trump on any of this stuff. And, and okay, here's my mind. Here's my gangster mind. Maybe I shouldn't say it, huh? <laughs> if I was doing something very illegal, the last thing I'd do is throw a stone at your house. I would just, like, disappear into the night with my money. We'll, say, let, we'll let Donald Trump figure out what he's going to do. But, uh, and the same thing's happening in New York. The, the judge up there that's doing it, come to find out, he doesn't have the cleanest record. Wouldn't you in your mind think, if I'm going to judge and condemn another human being, I better make sure, I'd better make sure. Crazy. So we're not judging, are we? Oh, we forgave, so we don't have to. Right? And a lot of times with people, their activities, it's not the what they did, it's the why they did it. That's, that's really what you have to focus on if you're ever going to get recovery. Because you can just condemn all the actions you want, but you, ha you have to come to the place, place where you say, but why did you do that? Why did you have to have that? Why why'd you do that? And, and that's how you fix a, a human soul. Well, I'm equipping you to help everybody. Okay, but we're not judging people. Wait till the next group of congregants come in here that just got saved. And they don't know what you know. Well, another hundred Camerons walk in here. You're going to have to sit by him and say, no, no, Genesis is in the front of the Bible. And they're not going to know why we do certain things. You're going to have to teach them. And my friend in Sweden, uh, Swedish culture, it's, it's, it's not a big deal at the beach if women are topless. Okay, uh, now nobody book a flight to Sweden for summertime. AJ, don't no, you're not looking up tickets right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, my the guy I know has a large church, and they decided to have a beach outing, a picnic, and and his church was like four or five thousand people at the time. And a lot of the new converts didn't realize um, what the Bible teaches a woman on how to dress and how to be discreet. And so they caught a few of the church girls and said, you, you need to cover up there, sister. They didn't know any different. You should have been here years ago the day the stripper showed up. She come in the big boots and a tiny little skirt and a low-cut thing and she named the guy who led her to the Lord. I said, you're good. Every, all eyes, here. And uh, she, she truly got saved, but that was all she had. And if my memory serves me right, one of the grandmas in the church took her shopping. It's pretty cool, isn't it? She didn't judge her. When you get some church clothes, no, she said, I'll go buy you some church clothes. You know who that was? Dee Dee. And then she got mad when I found out. Mind your own business. Nothing to do with you, Reverend. <laughs> yeah, she helped me. So we don't judge. All right, 2 Timothy. Are you guys all right or are you just tolerating me? Kind of? Let's see here. Where do I want to look? 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter. Let's read it in context. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay. But avoid. But avoid. What does avoid mean? Go around. Go the different way. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes. You know what that tells me? There's no end to it. There's real, no real uh, answer to the question. And you could just waste an hour of your life. But I have to know they generate strife. They start strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. 
and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. I much like the thought being taken captive. Now, you remember this morning I told you it's impossible for a, a true born-again Christian to be demon-possessed? But they can remember the rest of what I told you, but they can be oppressed, they can be afflicted, they can be influenced. And you get all hot and full of yourself and mad, you might start doing the work of the devil. I'll tell you a funny, uh, not it's a true story, it's kind of funny telling it. Had a guy in this church for a lot of years, he was a good guy, he'd come to church and he would give his money, he'd shout amen, but something began to, I don't know, he got ticked off about something. I can't remember if it was something I preached or what he thought I said. Or, uh, but from that point on, he became very critical of everything that went on in church. I mean, if you moved a chair, he was all, it was, you know, he wanted to know who made that decision and who do I think I am and blah, blah, blah. And finally, I said, you know, if, if, it seems like you're unhappy here. <laughs> Maybe if you want to make it to heaven, you should find a place that doesn't irritate you so much. He said, that's the best advice you've ever given me. He said, let me know what church you go to so I can call the pastor and warn him. <laughs> Two weeks go by, and probably 20-some people from my congregation said, brother so-and-so called me. Brother so-and-so called me. Brother so-and-so called me, complaining about the church. I nailed him. I said, you've been in this church five years. You have a witness to one person. You get your little feelings hurt, all of a sudden you're a blabbermouth. So you say one more thing, I'm sending the deacons. They'll throw you down the steps, take a picture of proof. <laughs> we'll put it up so everybody else will know not to murmur. <laughs> okay, so it is possible if you, if you get weak with God that you could be used by the devil and not the Holy Ghost. I mean, you could hurt feelings, you could offend people, you could... You could make people feel weird or on and on it goes and don't even know you're doing it. I love being used by the Holy Ghost. I do. I don't want to be used by the devil. I don't want to light any fires or break up any homes or split any churches or any of that stuff. I don't have the spirit of Karen upon me. You know, that that's funny, isn't it? You're trying to, he's trying to hold out and he can't do it. I don't want to be taken at his will. Well, how am I taking at his will? When I enter into this world of foolish and ignorant disputes. Got it? I'm, I'm just staying out of it. A lot of times I'll just say, read the Bible. And usually, usually when a believer begins to distort any of the verses, it's usually to their advantage to condone something that doesn't please God. And so you have to just take that for what it's worth. Hallelujah. So I want to escape the snare of the devil. I've done that, but I'm not getting into foolish arguments. Now, this Friday coming up, I have a wonderful thing. I did it last year. Our little granddaughter goes to Kalamazoo Christian. And what's that? Pastor appreciation thing. And, and so I went last year. I, she invited me this year. Uh, to come again, a little handwritten note, please, Grandpa, come. Uh, and uh, you go there, and, and what it is, it's the pastors of all of these kids. And so I'll go there, and there'll probably be 50 to 75 pastors. And there's tall ones and short ones and old ones and young ones. And women, every denomination is there, and I get donuts and coffee. And then I get to sit through their chapel with my little granddaughter while well, they sing the songs. and It's really cool. But anytime you get 50 preachers together, you have to be careful because you have egos. You have my doctrine's better than your doctrine. and I'm, I'm, Our doctrine in this church is we're pre-rapture. I, I truly believe from studying the Bible, we will go out of here before the Antichrist is known. And there's another doctrine that says you'll go halfway through. And then there's another one that says we'll live all the way through the tribulation and then be raptured. Well, we're not called to wrath. And I've studied it out. It's not just, I like, I like flavor number one, please. No, it's, it's what's going to happen. But I'm not going to argue with you. 
I'm just going to say read your Bible. Or I'll give you the materials and information I have, and, and you can argue with those guys. But. All right, go to Acts. Which one are you going out on, AJ? First load, first load out? Oh, that's right. You guys don't like me talking about the rapture. We discussed this last week. All of us older people don't mind talking about the rapture. But you're just starting your race. Gabe's probably saying, no way. Give me 40, 50 years. I want to skydive, ride a motorcycle, get thrown in jail. No? Grandma, come get me. Would you come bail him out or would you say, why are you in jail? You already told him no. Man, she don't play, does she? Would you bail Andrew out? <laughs> but poor Gabe is going to rot away, man. Gabe, make sure you get my number before you leave here today. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, X. Okay, those are bad things, right? Who are you inviting in? You want to invite in any of those people or, or spirits? So next time you want to judge, hold on forgiveness, just know you're opening a door. Well, actually, you know this verse, but I'll quote it to you. It's James 3.16. For where there's envy and strife, there's every evil work. Got it? And what's worth every evil work? Not one evil work, every evil work. How, how many eight evil works are there? How many do you think there are? Is there more than ten? Yeah? Oh, there's thousands and thousands of them. I don't want that. All right, Acts 16. I love this passage. Paul and Silas are thrown in prison, and they're chained up. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Not just Paul and Silas, everyone's chains were loosed. Now, you know the rest of the story, the jailer freaks out and thinks, I'm dead. But he gives him a wonderful promise in verse 31 that we are claiming. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Well, he believed on it. That's powerful. I, I'm claiming that over my, all of my family, whether they agree with it or not. All right, Paul and Silas are in a very uncomfortable place. They, they don't deserve to be there. They've been beaten. They're in pain. They're humiliated. This, this dungeon was not like a prison cell we see today. Uh, and they were, they were going to be executed. But did they complain against why God let this happen? All I did was obey Jesus, and look at me, I'm in jail. They didn't complain at all. What did they do? They began to sing, and they began to pray. And they did it so everybody heard them. Now, I don't see anything in here. They might. We could ask them when we get to heaven, but I don't see them singing or praying about an earthquake. I don't see them singing or praying about deliverance. Maybe they were singing... Like soon we'll be in heaven. Soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. Maybe they were singing that and the Holy Ghost just couldn't take it and say, no. <laughs> hey, it's good to kind of uh, put yourself in there. So I wonder if this is just an isolated incident or if we would release praise and worship and prayer in our time of need or discomfort, if that would cause heaven to move. I believe so. We've exercised that before. It, it, listen, it takes zero anointing to complain. But it takes faith to worship God even in adversity. So when I, when I on purpose choose to worship Him, whether it's at church, at my home, anywhere else I'm at, I'm opening a door for God to come in. Now, um, one of the first trips I went on was I went with, with Dr. Summerall to, uh, it was at then Leningrad, St. Petersburg, Russia now. 
and I flew with the, with the TV crew, and uh, we flew into uh, Riga, Latvia. And we took a train. Uh, well, from Riga, it was the port, and then they put stuff on semis. There were 12 semis, and so they have longshoremen in Latvia. But as great as communism was, the mafia still was strong under the current. They, they still had an economic system. And so halfway through of unloading this massive ship with medicine and food and all, all that stuff, um, they say, we, we negotiate new price. Nobody works until we get, and they like tripled the price of it. And so for a couple days, nothing happened in that little harbor that we were at except prayer meeting on that boat. And we had church. And we, y'all ever had church on a boat? It's pretty cool. You could smell the fish and the salt water, and 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 the almost all the the crew was Hispanic, so they sang all their songs in Spanish. It was really cool. And and I came to the realization they just locked God in this harbor by locking God's people into the harbor. And I think it, I think the original price was like ten thousand U.S. to unload the ship. They wanted thirty thousand U.S. We negotiated. We traded them four Bibles. And they unloaded the ship. Well, they took each Bible and sold it for 5000 but, but the Word of God had been starved from Russia for all those years. It was forbidden. And so these Russians were curious as to know what's in that book. Isn't that pretty cool that a handful of Bibles, they unload a ship? That's crazy. Here, I'm a young American. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. We went from money to Bibles. That was pretty cool. But did you think Jehovah knew they had locked that boat in there? Do you think he said, I won't tell them that yet? Maybe that's why he doesn't tell us everything before we do it. Because we might go, nah, no thanks. <laughs> so would it be advantage, advantageous to you to worship, sing, pray? Not just when you're in trouble, but when you are in trouble... You open a door. Tomorrow morning, if you choose to be silent, you won't open this door. You won't let God into the scene. You won't let the Holy Ghost come in and do what the Holy Ghost does. Amen. Okay. Malachi 10, or verse 3 and 10, uh, verse 10, you know this. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Says the Lord, and try me in this, if there will not be enough, if I will not pour out blessing upon you, that you cannot contain it. We're a tithing church. We believe, we believe in tithing. We believe in giving offerings. That's why this church is here. That's why God's in this house. Right? And once again, people sometimes can actually get in a position in their life where they can't do it, and I understand that, but you got to work your way out of it. If you can't do 10%, do 1%. Can't do 1%, bring me a bologna sandwich with mustard, cheese, and a slice of tomato. A sandwich is always better if somebody else makes it. Right, Evan? If your mom makes a sandwich, it's the best. And then he puts it in the air fryer. And... You don't do that? If you ever eat with the Elliots, they eat uh, BLT and put peanut butter on. Oh, we're going to have a church split now, aren't we? Yeah, so talking about my peanut butter, I'm going to give it a try. And, and if I come in, I'll, we'll know it didn't work. But I don't need a new thing to get hooked on either. Oh, well, enough about that. Wow. Giving, Malachi, open the windows of heaven, Go to, go to the 10th chapter of Acts. Ah, this is so cool. Acts 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people, and prayed to God always. 
About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and he observed him. He's, he was afraid. Wait a minute. What was he? But this guy was like a Boy Scout, right? What was Cornelius? He was a soldier. He was a commander. Okay? I don't think he's the scaring type. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, what do you think, Corey? You think he's the scaring type? Like, ooh. He looked at the angel and said, I wonder how I take this guy down. But he was afraid, which tells me this wasn't a little fat baby with a diaper. Okay, you, you all seen those images of it? And that's not an angel. You guys stick up with me here. Come on. You've never seen that little picture? And you think that's not an angel. Would you argue about it? No, we've just found out I don't argue about it. I go, if that's the kind of angel you want to believe for, but mine's about nine foot eight, and he's cut massive, and he has saved my life many times, right? Anyway, anyway, let me get back. When he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before me. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, who is, whose surname is Peter. And, and he's lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. How'd this angel know all this? He Googled that? He, how'd he do that? He will tell you what you must do. Well, if you know the rest of this Bible, this is how salvation came to the Gentiles. Uh, up to this time, it had only been for the Jews. And here, this door opens, and the man that opened the door was a man who prayed and gave alms and was devout. Now, I, I want to say this. I don't want to lose this thought because uh, it's Holy Spirit inspired. As, as tonight, we received our offering. This morning, we received an offering. Everybody participated, the box, the baskets, the online stuff. All of that went well. And all of that will be, be put to use to have the ministry function. You all know that. Right? Isn't that cool? I want to I be clear on this. If that's the only time you can sow, then do it. But you should try to do something tomorrow for somebody. You should try to help somebody out on Tuesday. Now, I don't say take in a homeless guy, okay, and don't give up all your rent money. But you can hold a door open for somebody. You, you can bless somebody. You can bless family members. I just want you to get in the mindset, I'm constantly sowing. And, and you can sow kindness. I, I took Kevster to lunch today. And as we were going in the restaurant, two little grandmas were coming to the door. I love grandmas. I don't have one, but I love them. So I thought, you know what? My mama taught me to hold the door open. And Kevin squirted through. All of a sudden, these, these two grandmas come, and then there's two, two grandpas behind them. And they all said, thank you, young man. I said, you're, you're so welcome. Have a nice day. You're so welcome. Then behind the two grandpas came another set of grandpas. And then the, the last one out said, you're probably not going to eat lunch today. I said, I'll eat lunch. Don't you worry about it. If Kevy has to bring it to me at this door, I know, how to, I know how to eat. But every day is an opportunity to sow something. Sow prayer. Intercede for somebody. Lift up somebody and help them with their burden. But we're givers all the time. We are. What little I have, this is what I give. So that opens up a wonderful door for my future. We all have a future, don't we? All right, I'll give you one more verse. Go to Hebrews. You guys have been reading Hebrews. Do you know the, the, the historians are not 100% sure on who wrote the book of Hebrews? And its style is very close to the Apostle Paul's style, but yet there's nothing that says, like in all the other epistles. Uh, but you can have a massive argument over who wrote this book. And I've been asked that, and I say, honestly, I believe Paul wrote it. More, more than likely, the Apostle Paul wrote it. And by that time, he'd written so many books, he forgot to put his name in there. Or maybe he did put his name in there, but his secretary... Messed up. 
Who knows? And if it's that big a deal, when you get to heaven, you can say, God, I got a question. It's been bugging me. So we're not going to argue about it, okay? Okay? Got it, Rachel? No more arguing about who wrote Hebrews. Will do? Not going to argue with Andrew. He'll push me down the stairs. He'll push his mama down the stairs. He'll push his pastor down the stairs. All right, okay, I'm done. Verse 1, Hebrews 3 and 1. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses, was also faithful in all his house. I believe in our confession. I believe my confession either produces life or death. Uh, the way I've been convinced of that is when I didn't think it mattered and started saying things that I didn't want to happen, started to happen. And I thought, oh, this law works. So tomorrow I will confess I'm the righteousness of God. That I'm blessed. I'm well. This church is good. I, I learned a great teaching from a minister one time, and he was speaking to predominantly preachers, and he said, I got a simple lesson for you. Quit talking bad about yourself. Quit talking bad about your church. Amen. That you might have battles, but that doesn't change a thing. All it does is entrench it. So if you've heard me preach, I don't talk about my problems. Of course, I don't have any. <laughs> if I do, they go away. I'll say, we'll figure that out. Don't worry about that. As Kevy's mom told her, you're borrowing trouble. There's a, there's, I think there's a, an amount of trouble for each day. So don't reach in tomorrow and get it for today. Okay? All right. So we're going to continue our confession. You should have scriptures that you confess over yourself. Psalm 91, all those, all those good things. All right, close your Bibles. If you already have, that's good. You anticipated what was coming. What a fun night. A fun day. Sunday fun day. Hey, should we get gimmicky and do a fun day Sunday sermon and see who comes? Shelly, we've learned a couple things about Andrew. Okay, he's kind of quiet, but he's... I preached a sermon one time about people being confused in their uh, gender. And I said, if would we notice if, any, if a guy came in here wearing a dress, how much you'd have to betray your conscience to do that? And Rachel said, I got a picture of Andrew in a dress. <laughs> Man, we, it's time out. We're stopping church right now. We're going we're gonna to see this picture. And Andrew wasn't here to defend himself. He could have said, woman, be quiet. This. Not that that would have helped, but he could at least said it. You remember that, that sermon? That was funny. I, Andrew... And, but that's because of his sisters. Once she clarified that, I felt better. I thought, oh, okay, good. All right, stand up. Hey, everybody got a story in this church. Even AJ has a few. La, la, la. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And I thank you that your people are growing in you, in your word in your spirit. And I confess over us today, I truly agree with what you've put in my spirit. This week is going to be amazing because we serve an amazing God. And you're going to do things that money can't buy, and you're going to do things money can buy. I thank you for restoration and putting back together and just love surrounding us. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, give somebody a high five. Don't forget to... Get that little doctor sheet out there, okay? And leave your $5 beside the... <laughs>